Ahmad Sahran Puri Rahmatullah Alayhi. Hafizul Quran wal Hadith Hazrat Abdas Maulana Khalil Ahmad bin Shah Majid Ali bin Shah Ahmad Ali Ayyubi Ansari was born towards the end of Safar in the year 1269 Hijri, December 1852, in Ambeta district, Saharanpur. His mother, B. Mubarakun Nisa, was the sister of Maulana Muhammad Yaqub, the Sadar Mudarris of Darul Ulum Deoband. She was the daughter of Hazrat Maulana Mamluk Ali. In his fifth year, he was admitted to the Maktab. For the sake of Barakat, Hazrat Maulana Mamluk Ali initiated the Bismillah of his primary learning in the Maktab. In view of his natural intelligence and brilliance, he completed the Quran Majid very quickly. He studied the primary Urdu and Farsi textbooks in Ambeta by several ulama. Thereafter, he accompanied his parent, paternal uncle, Maulana Ansar Ali, to Gawaliyar, where he commenced the study of the primary textbooks of Arabic grammar. After a short while, his father, Shah Majid Ali, resigned from, this, from his work and returned home. He recalled Hazrat Saharanpuri from Gawaliyar. His education was assigned to Maulana Sakhawat Ali Ambetwi. During this time, some relatives insisted that he be admitted to English school. He had no affinity with secular education and absolutely abhorred it, believing it to be a great calamity imposed on him. Nevertheless, he commenced this secular pursuit in obedi obedience to his seniors, but his heart was wholly attached to the knowledge of the deen. He always prayed and hoped for freedom from the fetters of this imposed English education. His prayers were answered. His prayers were answered by the opening of Darul Ulum Deoban in Muharram 1283. His maternal uncle, Maulana Muhammad Yaqub, was appointed the chief mudarris. Hazrat Saharanpuri then bid farewell to English education. Taking the permission of his parents, he went to Deoban where he commenced studies from Kafia. Six months later, the foundation stone of Mazahirul Ulum was laid in Rajab 1283. Here too, a maternal uncle of Hazrat Akhtas, viz. Hazrat Maulana Muhammad Mazhar, who was the Khalifa of Hazrat Gangohi, was appointed the Sadar Mudarris. Since Allah Ta'ala had willed that Hazrat become one of the trained products of Mazahirul Ulum, the circumstances were created for his transference to Mazahirul Ulum. Here he entered the class of Muhtasar, Muhtasarul Ma'ani. He completed his entire academic career at Mazahirul Ulum. After accomplishment of his academic studies, he was employed by the madrasa at a monthly wage of three rupees. This was the year 1288 Hijri, when Hazrat Akdas was 19 years. Thereafter, he proceeded to Lahore to pursue further ulumi adabiya, Arabic literature and eloquence. In this regard, Hazrat Akdas himself says, I went to Lahore and stayed there for a few months. After studying Maqamat and Mutanabbi by Maulana Faidul Hassan Rahmatullah alayhi, I returned to Deoband. Hazrat Maulana Yaqub Rahmatullah alayhi, arranged for me to be employed to translate Qamus in Urdu. The wage was 10 rupees per month. I was sent to a mountain to execute this duty. After about two months, I returned. Thereafter, he was sent as the Sadar Mudarris to the Madrasa of Hazrat Manglor. Since Allah Ta'ala had destined Wilayati Khasa, special rank of saint, sainthood for Hazrat Akdas, it was during his stay in Manglor that he er, that the urge and yearning for the acquisition of the true Noor developed in his heart. This was only natural for one destined to be the Sheikh of the age. In this regard, Hazrat Akdas himself explained in Tazkaratul Rashid, Prior to entering into the holy relationship, Bayat, I had no special connection with Hazrat Gangohi, nor were there any close family ties between us. During my student days, I had a slight acquaintance with Hazrat. I would only regard him as a holy alim. One day, my paternal uncle, Malvi Ansar Ali Sahib, under whom I was studying, said, After your studies, you should acquire tasawwuf from Malvi Sahib, i.e. Hazrat Gangohi. Once during Ramadan, I went to Gango and at night went to the Khanka to listen to his Qur'an. I was standing under a neem tree listening to his recitation. At the time, he was conducting the Taraweeh Salat. 
He was a Hafiz with an ex exceptionally beautiful voice. He was reciting with such beauty that its sweetness is in my heart to this day. He was reciting Surah Ahzab at the time. My marriage took place in Gango during my student days. Hence, I had great, greater occasion of studying in Gango. During my stay in Gango, I would spend the time in the blessed company of Hazrat Gangohi Rahmatullah Alayhi. I remember well that at that time I had the feeling of the sun's presence and a celestial light in that Mubarak confine, the Kanka. I experienced peace and serenity in my heart despite the fact that I was not his murid nor a devoted follower. Secondly, those who were present for spiritual and moral reformation, viz. Hafiz Abdul Rahman Sahib, Malvi Altafur Rahman Sahib, etc., had become embodiments of simplicity and virtue. Their moral character shorn of all evil attributes and adorned with lofty angelic qualities, coupled with their love for the sunnah and dislike for bid'at, made them replicas of the sahaba. Nevertheless, the thought of requesting Hazrat for bay'at did not occur to me. After termination of my studies, when I was sent as a mudarris to Madrasa Mangalore in the district of Saharanpur, there developed in me a peculiar condition and inclination towards ibadat. At, at that time, the halqa of Janab Qadi Muhammad Islam was in great prominence. The thought of joining his the thought of joining his gathering occurred to me. However, I also felt that I should first consult my seniors and seek their permission. Thus, I consulted with Maulana Muhammad Yaqub Rahmatullah Alayhi, who wrote to me in reply, The path towards Allah are according to the souls of people. Reaching Allah is not confined to the way you have adopted. Although it is also a way of reaching Allah, presently it is not appropriate for you to join the halqa. About this time, 1288 or 1289, the idea of bay'at occurred to me. Coincidentally, Hazrat Maulana Muhammad Qasim Nanotwi, Rahmatullah Alayh, happened to come to Rurki. On my invitation, he stayed at Manglore on his return. At night in privacy, I said, I have the thought of bay'at. In our surroundings are several buzrugs, yourself, Maulana Rashid Ahmad Sahib, Maulana Sheikh Muhammad Sahib, and Qadi Muhammad Ismail Sahib. I do not know what is best for me. If you feel that it is best for me to enter into the association of your khuddam, then do accept me. Alternatively, whatever you feel best for me, do instruct me. In reply, Hazrat Maulana Rahmatullah made a long speech, the essence of which is this. There is none better than Maulana Rashid Ahmad Sahib at this time. I said, he is extremely reluctant regarding bay'at. If you intercede on my behalf, then this matter will be finalized. He responded, good. When I come to Gango, then be there. I thus waited anxiously for the opportunity. When I was informed a few days later that Hazrat Maulana was going to Gango, I immediately went and said to Hazrat Nanotwi, when a gracious man promises, he fulfills. He smiled and said, well and good. During the morning after he had discussed with Hazrat, he called me. I entered, made salam and sat down. Hazrat Maulana Muhammad Qasim Sahib Rahmatullah Alayhi was silent. Hazrat Gangohi Rahmatullah Alayhi with a slight smile on his countenance said, Humble and lowly people become my murids. You are the son of a peer and a selected one. Why do you want to enter into bayat with me? I was already awestruck when I had entered his August presence, his August presence. This statement further incapacitated my senses. I could only stammer, Hazrat, I am worse, more contemptible and useless than them, i.e. the humble folk. He responded, enough, enough, make istikhara, I am coming to the masjid. I proceeded immediately to the masjid, made wudu, performed two rakats, and recited the Masnoon Istikhara Dua. On Hazrat's arrival, he asked, What is your opinion? I said, My opinion is the same. Accept me into your subjection. Incidentally, Malvi Muhammad Ishaq Ambetwi, who was the son of brother Hamid Ali, who was studying by Hazrat, was also present, waiting for the initiation. Hazrat Rahmatullah instructed us both to repent. Thereafter, he initiated us into the system of subjection i.e. accepted us as murids. 
all praises for Allah for that bounty. During the same time, an offer of employment from Bhopal came for Hazrat Mawlana Muhammad Yaqub Rahmatullah for a salary of 300 rupees a month. Much pressure was put on him to accept this offer. However, in spite of him earning at that time 30 rupees per month, he declined the offer. He was then pressed to send another reliable person to take up the post. Hazrat Mawlana Yaqub Rahmatullah sent his nephew, Hazrat Mawlana Khalil Ahmad Rahmatullah Thus, by the choice of his honorable uncle and on the approval of Hazrat Gangohi Rahmatullah he left during the year 1293 Hijri to take up the post in Bhopal at the salary of 50 rupees per month. His residence was the mansion of Madarul Maham and every arrangement was made for his comfort and wants. However, however, the spiritual effulgence which he had experienced in the former place was lacking here in Bhopal. Furthermore, the weather did not agree with him. Furthermore, the weather did not agree with him. Maulana Khalil Saharanpuri Rahmatullah therefore handed his resignation to his Sheikh Hazrat Gangohi Rahmatullah and requested permission to return. The reply which Hazrat Maulana Gangohi Rahmatullah wrote is recorded in Tazkiratul Khalil. It is reproduced here. Brother Malvi Khalil Ahmad Sahib, may your fuyud endure for a long time. Your letter was received today. In view of the weather, in view of the we- in view of the weather there not agreeing with you, your return is necessary. Relocating on account of the weather is confirmed by the hadith. However, since it involves livelihood, the matter is somewhat delicate. Therefore, until alternative arrangements are not made, leaving is not appropriate. It is therefore advisable to stay there for a while. You were much in demand in Muradabad. However, Malvi Abdul Haqpuri has now taken up the post there, but he is unable to fulfill his duties as are required. If it becomes advisable, I shall endeavor there or elsewhere. I shall inform you after arrangements are made, inshallah. In accordance with the instructions of Hazrat Maulana Gangohi Rahmatullah alayhi, he, Maulana Khalil, stayed on in Bhopal until the Hajj season dawned. The urge to go for Hajj became overpowering. Hazrat Maulana Khalil was granted leave. He also received a few months' salary in advance. Although this money was not sufficient, his enthusiasm impelled him to proceed. This episode is described in detail in Tazkiratul Khalil. On reaching Makkatul Mukarrama, he presented himself at the home of Hazrat Haji Imdadullah Rahmatullah Alayh. The pleasure of Anwari Batiniya, spiritual light, there was most wonderful. This was the first Hajj of Hazrat Maulana Khalil Ahmad Rahmatullah Alayh. It has been discussed in great detail in Tazkiratul Khalil. After completing Hajj, his intention was to proceed to Medina Munawwara. However, the road to Medina was dangerous. Even those people who had already commenced the journey to Medina were returning because of the danger. Anarchy, strife, and killing were rampant. Hazrat Haji Sahib said, Malvi Khalil Ahmad, what is your intention? I have heard the Hujjaj are returning home in large numbers on account of the danger and unsafety of the road to Medina. Maulana Khalil Ahmad replied, Hazrat, I have resolved to go to Medina Tayyibah. The appointed time of Maut cannot be delayed anywhere. If it comes in this road to Medina, what greater fortune does a man wish for? It is by the grace of Allah Ta'ala that he has brought me thus far. If now I abandon the journey to Medina on account of the fear of death, then who can be more unfortunate than me? Hazrat Haji Haji Sahib's face brightened up with pleasure, and he commented, Enough, enough. For you, the advice is that you should certainly go. Inshallah, you will reach. Thus, Hazrat Maulana Khalil took leave and set out for Medina Munawwara. He said, Only I know of the great peace and comfort I experienced along the journey. I stayed about two weeks in the sacred precincts and reached home safely. In this journey, Hazrat Maulana Khalil Ahmad Rahmatullah received authorization in hadith from Shaykh Ul Haram Maulana Shaykh Ahmad Dahlan and from Shaykh Ul Mashaykh Hazrat Shah Abdul Ghani Mujaddid Naqshbandi Dehlawi, who had taken up residence in Medina. This is recorded in detail in the beginning of Musal Salat. 
The authorization from Sheikh Ahmad Dahlan was acquired in Makatul Mukarrama, while that of Hazrat Shah Abdul Ghani was obtained in Madinatul Munawwara after Hajj in the year 1294. After returning from Hajj, Hazrat Maulana Khalil Ahmad Rahmatullah had no intention of returning to Bhopal because the weather conditions were not favorable. After staying there, after staying a few days in his hometown, Ambeta, he left in Jamadul Ula 1294 for Sikandarabad in the district of Baland Shahar, where he took up a post as Mudarris in Madrasa Arabiya Jami Masjid. However, there However, here the people of Bida vehemently opposed him. They left no stone unturned to harm him. Hence, he sought permission from Hazrat Gangohi Rahmatullah to return. However, Hazrat Gangohi Rahmatullah refused permission and wrote the following letter. Malbi Khalil Ahmad Sahib, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Your letter has been received and contents noted. Do not permit the latest developments to alarm you. In this world, in this world occur events which please and displease. Continue with your mission. If the opponent is bent on harming you, then know that the supporters is protect that the supporter is protecting you. As far as possible, do not resort to abandonment. It is better to keep all happy. Perhaps it will prove beneficial. Allah Ta'ala said, Thus, because of the mercy of Allah, you are affectionate towards them. However, there is no hope that this sect this Ahli Bida will become pleased, especially when they are exhorted by their lecturers to oppose you. Wassalam. However, despite the affection and aff affability shown by Hazrat Maulana Khalil Ahmad Sahib, the intransigence of the people there went on increasing. Hence, with the permission of Hazrat Gangohi Rahmatullah alayhi, he handed his resignation and returned. In that very year, 1294, the month of Shawwal and August group consisting of the Akabir of Hindustan departed for Hajj. In this group were the illustrious stars of knowledge and piety with Hazrat Gangohi, Hazrat Nanotwi, Hazrat Maulana Mazhar, Hazrat Maulana Muhammad Yaqub, as well as other senior ulema. Although Hazrat Saharan Puri, Maulana Khalil Ahmad Rahmatullah had a great desire and wished to accompany this august caravan of seniors. Hazrat Gangohi Rahmatullah did not consent on account of some difficulties regarding traveling arrangements. Moreover, because Hazrat Maulana Khalil Sahib had just returned from Hajj, this illustrious group returned from Hajj in the month of Rabiul Awal 1295. On their return, a letter from Malvi Shamsuddin, Chief Justice of Bawal. Bawalpur was awaiting Maulana Muhammad Yaqub Sahib. The letter was a request for a very highly qualified Ustad. Many qualities were stipulated in the letter. The Ustad had to be a young man, extremely intelligent, an expert in all branches of knowledge, an embodiment of virtue and character, who could be an exemplar for students, etc. Hazrat Maulana Yaqub Rahmatullah selected Maulana Khalil Ahmad for this post. Hazrat would often say that he had declined the offer, saying that he was not adequately qualified. However, Maulana Yaqub Rahmatullah said, The Ahli Ilm usually consider themselves in this way, i.e. that they are not adequately qualified. You consider yourself unqualified because you still have your seniors above you. However, when you go outside, you will not find anyone as qualified as yourself. Finally, by the unanimous opinion of Hazrat Maulana Yaqub Rahmatullah alay, and Hazrat Gangohi Rahmatullah alay, Maulana Khalil Ahmad Rahmatullah alay, took up the post in Bawalpur for a monthly salary of 30 rupees. While he was in Bawalpur, he undertook a second Hajj journey which he himself describes in his Biyad. This journey is also described in Tazkiratul Khalil. It took place in the month of Shawwal 1297. The year 1296 mentioned in Tazkiratul Rashid is a printing error. It was on this blessed journey that Hazrat Haji Imdadullah Rahmatullah bestowed the mantle of Khilafat to Hazrat Saharan Puri Rahmatullah and presented his Mubarak Amama turban. This is mentioned in the second volume of Tazkiratul Rashid as follows. When the Honorable Maulana went on Hajj the second time to Makkah Muazzama, Imam Rabbani, 
Maulana Gangohi wrote to Haji Sahib Haji Imdadullah requesting him to confer the mantle of Khilafat to Malvi Khalil Ahmad Sahib. On seeing Maulana, Hazrat Haji Sahib became extremely happy. During Muharram 1297, he presented the document of Khilafat adorned with his seal and in a state of elation, he removed his blessed turban from his head and placed it on Maulana's head. The Honorable Maulana presented both gifts to Imam Rabbani and said, I am not deserving of these. This is only your, your attention and grace for me. Hazrat Gangohi replied, May these be blessed for you. He then signed the Khilafat Nama and handed it together with the turban to Maulana Sahib. The respect of Maulana Khalil was such that whenever he would initiate, make bayat of a murid, he would instruct him after having made toba for past sins to say, I have made bayat to Hazrat Maulana Rashid Ahmad Sahib on the hands of Khalil Ahmad. In this narrative, the date Muharram 1297 is a printing error. Hazrat's departure for Hajj was in Shawwal 1297. The turban mentioned above is the same blessed turban which Hazrat Saharan Puri Rahmatullah Alai presented to my father. Hazrat Maulana Muhammad Yahya Sahib Rahmatullah Alai on the occasion of the bestowal of the mantle of Khilafat to him. This episode is narrated by Maulana Ashik Ilahi Sahib in Tazkiratul Khalil. He writes, Malvi Muhammad Yahya Sahib Marhum was my benefactor and sincere friend. His hidden excellencies and auspicious states require a separate volume. After all, he must have been a somebody for Imam Rabbani to love more than his own offspring. Hazrat Rabbani, i.e. Maulana Gangohi, often said that he was the staff of old age and the eyes of the blind. Occasionally, if Maulana Muhammad Yahya would disappear for a few minutes for some work, Imam Rabbani would become perturbed and restless. He spent 12 years in such love and affection, which cannot be explained. This endured until the demise of Hazrat Imam Rabbani. Hazrat Maulana Khalil Ahmad Rahmatullah whose foresight had discerned, had discerned the worth and value of Maulana Muhammad Yahya 12 years ago, went specially to Gango to present the turban with Murshidul Arab Wal Ajam, Hazrat Hajim Dadullah had presented to him. On this occasion, while placing the Mubarak Amama on Maulana Muhammad Yahya's head with his blessed hands, he said, You are deserving of this. Until this day, I was its protector and trustee. Alhamdulillah. Today I have handed the haq to the rightful one and am now relieved of the responsibility of this amanat. I authorize you to initiate any seeker into the four silsilas and to show him the name of Allah. The third and all subsequent hajj journeys of Hazrat Maulana Khalil Ahmad Rahmatullah were undertaken from Saharanpur. The third hajj was after the heart-rending demise of Hazrat Qutub Alam Gangohi Rahmatullah Consolation for the immense grief which he suffered as a result of this event could be obtained only from his presence at the holy grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His fourth Hajj was in 1328. In this year, Hazrat Akdas Shah Abdul Rahim rahmatullah alayhi went for Hajj, accompanied by a large group of his khuddam and companions. Hazrat Saharan Puri accompanied Hazrat Akdas Rai Puri as far as Delhi. On his return from Delhi, Janab Shah Zahid Hussein Sahib of Bahat prevailed on Hazrat Saharan Puri to also proceed for Hajj. He said that he too would accompany Hazrat. Perhaps this instance was the effect of the yearning and enthusiasm which overwhelmed the heart of Hazrat Saharan Puri as a consequence of the departure of Hazrat Rai Puri Rahmatullah Alay. Hence he accepted the offer. Hence he accepted the offer after much pressure was brought. To, on him to do so by Shah Zahid Hussein. Thus, he departed from Saharanpur during the middle of Zul Qa'da and reached Makkatul Mukarrama on the 6th of Zul Hijjah. After Hajj, he went to Madinatul Munawwara via the route of Yambu. He stayed 22, day, 22 days there. He returned to Saharanpur at the end of Safar 1329. The fifth Hajj was a momentous occasion which took place in Shawwal 1332 in the company of Hazrat Shaykhul Hind Rahmatullah Alayhi. 
However, he did not obtain the companionship of Hazrat Shaykh Ul Hind Rahmatullah from the beginning of the journey. However, a week before the journey, four illustrious personalities gathered for top secret discussions in the library of Mazahirul Ulum. These august personalities were Hazrat Saharan Puri, Hazrat Shaykh Ul Hind, Hazrat Akhtas Shah Abdul Rahim Rai Puri, and Maulana Al Haj Hakim Ahmad Rampuri Rahmatullah Alayhi. No one else besides these four were allowed to participate in the talks. For a full week, these discussions continued in privacy. Daily after Ishraq Salat, they would go into privacy. At midday, word would repeatedly come from the home of Hazrat Sahan Puri to announce that meals were ready. They would reply, we are coming. They would descend from upstairs just before Zohar Azan, and after quickly having their meals, perform Zohar Salat, then immediately seclude themselves to continue their talks until after the Azan of Asr. After Asr, there would be no majlis. However, sometimes after Maghrib, there would be a majlis. Everyone was curious to know what transpired at such lengthy and secret talks, which lasted for a whole week, but no one had any inkling. At the time I was a child, I would ask every senior about these talks. My father had some idea that my father had some idea what these discussions were about. He therefore made some allusions which would satisfy my curiosity. During the absence of Hazrat Sheikh Ul Hind Rahmatullah alayhi, the responsibility of his duties was assumed by Hazrat Raipuri Rahmatullah alayhi. Although these personalities held high aspirations, this is a reference to their jihad. Uh, this is a oh, sorry. Although these personalities had high aspirations, Allah's decree did not permit their attainment. In Makkah, on account of the excesses and oppression of Sharif Hussein, the Turkish governor of Hijaz, Hazrat Saharun Puri was compelled to return before Hajj during Shawwal 1334, while Hazrat Akhtas Sheikh Ul Hind was imprisoned and exiled to Malta. Although in Tathrit ul Khalil it is mentioned that Hazrat Saharun Puri returned from this journey in Shawwal, he in fact departed from Makkah ul Mukarramah at the end of Shawwal and his ship reached Bombay on the 8th Zul Qa'da. As he disembarked from the ship, he was handed the telegram announcing the demise of my honorable father, Hazrat Mulana Muhammad Yahya Rahmatullah Alayhi. This news aggravated the grief he suffered as a result of the difficult events which transpired in the years of his residency in Makkah ul Mukarramah. To, compo to compound all this, as he alighted from the ship, he along with his wife and brother, Haji Mokmul Ahmad Sahib, who was Hazrat's right-hand man, were taken into custody. The three together with their luggage were taken to Nanital. The episode of their prolonged interrogation, which lasted several days, is quite lengthy. Finally, by the fadl of Allah Ta'ala, they were released. His sixth hajj took place in 1338. He left from Saharanpur on 2nd Sha'ban. I too accompanied him on this journey. There was some delay in Bombay regarding embarkation because the retinue of Hazrat's companions was approximately 300 and Hazrat disliked to embark without all his companions. Two ships sailed without them since passage for the entire group was not available on any one of these. Tickets for the entire group were purchased well in advance on a third ship. Those were very difficult days in Bombay where it was extremely difficult for Deobandis to live publicly. Some sincere friends had therefore arranged accommodation for the group in a tent pitched in the veld of the, on the outskirts. Finally, they reached Makkah ul Mukarramah on the 11th of Ramadan ul Mubarak. In spite of Hazrat's weakness and dizziness as a result of the ship's rocking, he himself conducted the Taraweeh Salat while standing. He would recite half juz in eight rakats and another quarter juz in the remaining 12 rakats was recited by me. On reaching Makkah ul Mukarramah, Hazrat performed Taraweeh behind a highly qualified Qari who recited two juz nightly. This recitation was from the beginning. In addition, Hazrat would recite his own Quran in Nafil Salat. When Hazrat reached Makkah ul Mukarramah, Hazrat Maulana Muhibuddin Muhajir e Makki, who was among the Khulafa of Hazrat Haji Imdadullah and who was a great Sahib e Kash, while embracing him, said, Maulana, why have you come here? The greater Qiyamah is about to be enacted here. 
return immediately to Hindustan after Ramadan. Hazrat said to us, it was my intention to take up residence in Medina Taiba, but Maulana Muhibuddin Sahib vehemently forbids it. I have already visited Medina Taiba several times. Since this is your first Hajj and it is not known if you will again get this opportunity, therefore proceed to Medina. The times were so unsafe and dangerous that before Hajj, some people would, would hazard the trip to Medina and after Hajj, a very few would venture to Medina. Neither life nor property was safe. The government of Sharif Hussein had no control beyond the confines of Makkah. Killing and plundering were rampant. Only three-day visas were granted to stay in Medina Tayyiba. If anyone wished to stay more than three days, a daily fee of one gold coin had to be paid to the Bedouin in charge of the caravan. But this extended stay was possible only with the consent of the Bedouin. A few of us Khuddam, with the blessings of Hazrat and the mercy and grace of Allah, finally reached Medina Tayyiba, traveling clandestinely, initially along the coast, then through the valleys of Mount Ghair. The story of this journey is indeed long and interesting. One of the manifestations of the innumerable bounties and grace of Allah Ta'ala, which have always been with this humble one, was that instead of three days, I was able to stay 40 days in Medina Taiba. This is truly an example of the bounties stated in the Quranic ayah. And if you count the bounties of Allah, never will you be able to enumerate them. On reaching Medina, one of the camels of our caravan died on account of sheer exhaustion. Neither did the Jamal, owners of the camel, have sufficient funds to purchase another mount, nor did we possess enough money to advance a loan with which another camel could be purchased. Hazrat Saharun Puri had calculated our expenses for the journey and for a three-day stay in Medina. Thus, we were given sufficient money only for this. The rest of our funds were left in the safe custody of the trader Haji Ali Jan. Whenever the jump Whenever the Jamal would ask Jamal would ask us for a loan to enable him to purchase a camel, he would ask him for a loan to buy food, saying that we had made arrangements for only three days. May Allah Ta'ala grant him a good reward. The poor man repeatedly presented excuses for the delay. When one of our associates would sometimes complain to the Amir of Medina, he too would apologize and instruct us to be patient. He would also threaten the Bedouin. The stay of this journey is very interesting and wonderful, but it is.